If you are a nursery owner, you need to know how to grow Nandina domestica. This plant is so easy to grow, and they are in great demand by landscapers and retail buyers. So, if you aren't selling Nandina, you need to start now. And in this video, we are going to show you exactly how to do it. Make sure you stick around until the end of the video. We are going to share our top 5 expert tips for growing Nandina. And to make sure you always have this information on hand, we have created an ebook for you. Check it out on the link in the description. There are two ways growers can get their hands on Nandina seed. One, through reputable seed retailers or two, by harvesting their own seed. If you find yourself in need of a seed supplier, quick internet searches should put you on the right track. If it's your first time buying from a site, go through the company's reviews to make sure they are worth your time and money. If you are harvesting your own seed, you can do so when the berries start turning red. In our South African climate, this happens at the beginning of autumn. However, these might happen only at the end of winter in other regions. We will discuss this further in our top tips for growing Nandina domestica from seed toward the end of the video. Red berries like these have reached their first maturity stage and we can start the planting process. Take your berries and let them soak in water for 24 hours. This helps to soften the seed coat. In case in the seed coat are the true seeds. Some growers suggest removing the seed coat before sowing your seed, but we have been able to achieve a good germination percentage without removing the coat. This saves us a lot of time, especially when we are knees deep in sowing thousands and thousands of seeds. After your seeds have soaked, let them air dry for a few minutes before you sow them into flats. Refill these flats with a good quality seed germination and cutting mix made up of well composted bark perlite and vermiculite. Gently flatten the surface with your hands to sow the seeds evenly and prevent overcrowding. First position your seed in the trays. You can do this by gently pushing on the seeds. We sow our seeds approximately 1 to 2 cm away from one another. Once you have spread your seeds, start pushing them deeper into the germination mix. Make sure they are about 3-5 to five millimeters deep. Once they are in their holes, cover them back up with the mix mounted around them. The seeds can now be left outside for around 3-6 to six months. The first signs of germination are noticed at the beginning of spring. We keep them under shade nets in a sheltered spot in the nursery. They receive daily irrigation from sprinklers. These seeds must be kept outside during winter for one important reason, cold temperature. Nandina seeds are quite remarkable in that they are dependent on cold temperatures if they are to germinate. As we mentioned earlier, we sow our Nandina seeds when they are starting to turn red. This is their first maturity stage. However, the embryos inside the seed have not yet fully developed. Cold temperature triggers a second maturation cycle by activating temperature-sensitive enzymes. These enzymes then allow the embryo to become fully mature and ready to develop into seedlings. The seedlings are kept in this spot for a whole year until they look like this. These seedlings were sown almost a whole year ago and they are finally ready for transplanting. Young Nandina seedlings are transferred from their flats into small 2-litre pots like these. They are planted in a high-quality mix made up primarily of composted bark. In this nursery, the Nandina are commonly not sold at pots of this size as the return on income is not worth the investment. Therefore, they are left to settle in these pots to grow a bit more. After they have acclimatized, they are transferred to larger 4-litre pots. At this point, the grower can start selling his Nandina. In pots of this size, the client base will usually consist of other nurseries who are looking to resell the plants or landscapers. The grower can add even more value to his Nandina by letting the plants in the 4-litre pots grow up a bit and then transplant them into 10 litre pots. These pots can sell for up to 10 times the value of their smaller counterpart and it is an easy way for a grower to maximize his income. However, they must have the time and space available to do so. With that in mind, to say thank you for sticking around this long, here are some expert tips you can use to maximize your chances of success. Tip 1. Know how Nandina grows in your area. As we mentioned, our climate means we can harvest Nandina seed towards the end of summer sow them in autumn, and have seedlings by the next summer. However, in regions like North America, the growing cycle is quite different. Here, the young seed require two cold periods if the seed are to germinate properly. This means the seed develop to the first maturation stage during winter. However, they require a second cold period to trigger further development of the embryo which ultimately becomes the new seedling. This happens during the next fall. This generally means the seed only start germinating towards the beginning of winter in the second growing season. Tip 2. Keep your seed in the fridge. Luckily there is a simple method us growers can use to mimic the cold temperatures. A fridge, before you sow your seed, 
Keep them in the fridge at around 4 degrees Celsius for at least 6 weeks. This cold temperature will trigger the enzymes and let the embryo develop properly. However, be sure to keep an eye out for fungal growth during those 6 weeks. If you have cool enough winters in your nursery, you can just as easily sow your seed and leave them outside as we do here in our South African setting. As you can see, even though our winters are comparatively mild, it still gets cool enough to let the embryos develop properly. Tip 3. Treat your seed with bleach. Fungal growth can be a major problem. To help prevent this, soak your seed in a 15% bleach solution after the 24-hour soaking process. Don't let your seed sit for days in this mixture as the anaerobic conditions can kill the seed. We have had success with leaving the seed in a clean fish tank with a pump on to keep enough oxygen in the water. Tip 4. Protect young seedlings. When fully grown, Nandina can tolerate freezing temperatures to below minus 5 degrees Celsius but you should protect your young seedlings from frosty temperatures during their first couple of years of growth. As young seedlings, this might not be a problem as they start their first growing season in the spring. However, in their 2 and even 4 litre pots, we make sure to cover them with frost cloth at night during the winter. Tip 5. Have well-planned production and financial cycles. To bridge the gap between sowing the seed and selling the plants 3-4 to four years later when they are this size, growers can consider selling a range of plant sizes. This is especially important for growers who have just started growing Nandina, and for those who might not be receiving an income from a range of other plants in the meantime. Ultimately, the importance of a well-planned production and financial cycle is crucial for slow-growing perennials like Nandina. And that's it for our video on growing Nandina domestica from seed to cell in your nursery. Before you go, remember your copy of our ebook and we will see you in the next video.